I have a review this time for an image editor that's mostly aimed at removing noise from your photos. It's Noiseless Pro. There is a standard program just called Noiseless, and then there's this Pro version. The Pro version, unlike the regular version, supports the RAW image file format, as well as including some adjustment tools for RAW files. It also supports some more colour spaces, such as sRGB, Pro Photo, and a couple others. And it has a four extra presets over here. So if you need to edit your raw image files, such as the, those that might be, say, .raw or one of the others, then I recommend you get the pro one, not the standard version. Okay, so I've loaded an image here, which is a raw file from a Sony A57 camera, 16-bit. It was taken at Hampton Court, and it's quite a dark image. Now, I'll have to zoom in to show you, but there is noise in it. But we have presets to the right here, such as lightest, light, moderate, medium, intense, strong, strongest, extreme, additional presets, balance, soft, strong color noise, strong luma noise. When you first open the file, it will determine the best preset and select it, although you can always manually change and select, like, say, light instead, but it will select the best one first for you. As we, you can see, I've shown you the whole image to start with, but normally once you open the file, it'll go straight into 200%, and it'll have a progress bar that will go across the top here, to apply the effect. Now if we look on the left, here is the original image. As you can probably see, I'm not sure how well it shows in the video, but you should be able to see that it's full of grain and noise. If you look on the left, there is a lot less. So if we scroll down, we can scroll to say here, and let's take a look at over here. Now once we stop, we wait a sec for the progress bar to go across. Now as you can see, the meat here is very grainy. It's very grainy here on the tub where it's not here. You can see up here full of noise, smooth here. We can then go to 100% to zoom out a little bit more to get a bit more of the objects in to compare it. You can see really smooth over here and quite grainy and a bit flat looking to the left. Like I say, it selects a preset by default that you want, although you can change it later. You can hit here and make that preset a favorite and it'll be in the favorites menu. As you can see, it has moderate amount plus 100. Each of these presets has an amount slider, basically 100% or you can turn it down to say 40% and it will use a lot less of that effect. Now let's wait for the progress bar to go across and see the difference with moderate at 40%. Now, you might not notice zoomed in at this distance, but I did notice some over here. It added more grain back in, so we definitely want more than 40%. Let's try 70. Now that seems to have done most of it, so let's actually zoom in to 200%. Then let's let it reapply the effect. Okay, that's actually got it pretty good at 70%. So if you can find an amount like 70% that works, I would use that lower number rather than the higher number because you don't want to overdo it. Now, is that all there is to the program? Well, that's all you need to do. What is All you need to do is find a preset and an amount that takes out the grain while leaving the image looking good and then export it. That's all you have to do. But there is more to this program, especially if you have Pro. So let's take a look at some of the other options. Up here, we have full screen, curtain, horizontal. So you can apply a before and after side by side rather than a split down the middle you're probably going to want to use this mode the most. Up here we have App Center, 
which just shows you some links to information about some of the other programs made by this company. So you have Intensify Pro, boosts the drama and detail in your photos, basically make your photos pop out more. You have Snap Hill Pro, remove unwanted objects and fix imperfections. Tonality Pro, easily make mind-blowing black and white photos. Focus Pro, bring professional lens effects and your photos in one click. So there's some interesting programs there. We then have open an image, save and share an image. You have your various sizes here. Then you have navigation window, which basically if you're zoomed in, let me show you. If you're zoomed in, you can scroll around your photo from down here in this little window. So we can drag this box around and look up here instead. It's not necessary, you don't have to use it if you don't want to because you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse and scroll around the big image here without it. Then you have crop to crop your image and it does have our nice rules of third. We have rule of third or we can change it to the golden ratio. You're probably gonna want rules of third here. Then do you want free rotation original uh, aspect ratio do you want to crop it to a 4x3 or widescreen 16 by 9 aspect ratio or 3 by 2 or 1-1 one, one. you can select it here let's just leave it on free you can change the image size up here the angle crop and cancel that's cancel you then have quick preview quick preview basically just quickly refreshes the preview here on, on the right you then have undo and redo here then if you have the pro version you have adjust and adjust has raw processing so you can adjust kind of like if you're using camera raw in photoshop you can adjust the temperature the tint the exposure the contrast down here under noise reduction for your raw file that's providing you have a raw file open of course which in this case i do you can adjust the amount of reduction the smoothness the luminance and various effects here area strength Structure, details, filter, including highlights, mid-tone, shadows, details, and overall opacity here. You can also create a preset from there. So, for example, let's say it's a bit dark. Well, we can adjust it here. We can add a bit more, say, highlights in. Quick preview. We can reduce the shadows if we want. Quick preview. And you'll see it changes uh, taking effect here. Or if we go here, we might be able to get a quicker idea for these adjustments. Then what if you want to use a raw processing and noise reduction, but you don't want some of these others, you can untick them to turn them off here. And then we can retick the ones we want to use. So that's quite handy. Now, one of the other advantages to having the pro version is you have plugins, which is to add support for this noise reduction, smart noise reduction technology of Noiseless Pro in some third party applications. So if you use Photoshop, but you want to take advantage of the noise reduction capabilities of Noiseless Pro, you can install the plugin of Noises Pro inside Photoshop or Lightroom or Aperture or Photoshop Elements. One thing I should mention here is Aperture has been discontinued now by Apple and so has iPhoto. Both have now been replaced by a pro one program called Photos which is available in OS 10 10.10.3. So it's handy to have this option for those who are still using Aperture but they may want to consider adding a version of this for photos as that is that will completely replace Aperture eventually. I am using the latest version at the time of making this review which is 1.0.1 .1 because Noiseless and Noiseless Pro have not been out for very long. Noiseless, the standard version, not the Pro, just plain old noiseless is available for around £13 on the Mac App Store. Pro that I'm showing here is not available yet at least on the App Store but you can buy it now directly from the company on their website and I will put a link in the description. Okay what about exporting and sharing? Well if we go to file we can share and share to our Facebook or Twitter 
or even a few other things such as through email or Flickr or something called Smug Mug, which I don't really know much about, but it has it if you need it. You can also then send it to another third party program such as Lightroom, Photoshop, Aperture or iPhoto. Again, it hasn't been, it's a little, they've made this a little bit too long ago because they've made it with support for iPhoto, which is now basically been decommissioned and new versions of Mac have photos instead. So, and it doesn't seem to support that new photos app, this one down here yet, but I'm sure they'll update that in a patch soon. You can also send it to some other programs made by the same company, such as Intensify, and you can export to an image file. Here you can select to export as a JPEG, which is the thing you're probably going to be doing the most often, but you can also use PNG, JPEG 2000, TIFF, Photoshop document even, PDF, BMP, TGA, and OpenEXR. You most likely want to have JPEG. You can then select the quality, full blast, full highness, 100% quality, right down to very low. If you have the pro version, you can also select a color space, so you can select to save it, the save the file with an sRGB color space, an Adobe RGB color space, or a Pro Photo color space. I can't remember which this file was originally because my camera does let me select sRGB or Adobe RGB. And I picked whichever one had the most color information in it to make sure my files were the best I could get. I think that might have been Adobe. So if that's the case, I can then select this and save it with as much color information as it had before. And that is that. That's all there is to sharing and exporting in Noiseless Pro. So what do I think of Noiseless Pro? Well, it's a great way to remove noise quickly and easily if you've got a photo like this one taken in a fairly low light situation such as a dark banqueting hall or a dark uh, kitchen inside Hampton Court. This is taken inside an old kitchen and it was very dull. There was some light coming in through a window up, here, up towards the top here but not much. It's very dark in there, very gloomy. And so as you saw this photo was filled with quite a lot of noise and this has done a great job without me really doing any adjustments. I have purely opened it and I let it do the work, except for I did end up just experimenting. I turned the amount down to 70 instead of 100%. But pretty much all I really needed to do was open this raw file, wait for it to apply the effect, let it pick the preset and the amount, and it looked all right. I could have just gone to file export and done nothing else with it. I didn't have to do a thing with it. I could have just opened it, let it do its work and save it. So it's a really great way, especially if you're not a real pro hardcore photographer, if you're, especially if you're an amateur, this is a great way to remove noise without reducing the quality of your image by, by much, if anything at all. Which would I recommend? Would I recommend Noiseless or Noiseless Pro? If you know you're going to just use an iPhone or a point and shoot camera and you will never likely use RAW, then save your money and just get noiseless for £13. If, however, you do use RAW or you think you may need to use RAW within the foreseeable future, then instead of buying Noiseless, then having to re get, uh, then later on get Noiseless Pro, I'd recommend you just go, dive straight in and get Noiseless Pro for around £40. It even has all of these capabilities over here, like you'd expect from something like something like uh, Lightroom or Photoshop Camera Raw. So it is a great program to edit your raw files in. If you have any questions about using the program or if you're not sure what features if you want if there's a particular feature you need to use and you're not sure if it has it or not ask me in the comments with this video and I'll try to find out for you and get back to you so please like and share this video and if you do me a huge favor and subscribe as it only take a few seconds and will help me out a lot thanks